Where do ideas come from? Are they, are they pre existing forms that we merely tap into? Are they a function of our brain's default mode network? What are the origins of ideas and where do they begin? And, and why is that such an important question for the artist? When I went away to graduate school and came to the realization that ideas were important in the work of art, the idea behind the work was the thing that's important. I would walk around the woods uh, trying to think of ideas for work as if they would come from nowhere. I was thinking so hard that it was this smoke was both figuratively pouring off of my brain. It wasn't a very effective way of coming up with ideas. It wasn't a very effective way of thinking about artwork. Yeah. What do you want me to talk about, the high school kids? Yeah. I mean, my kids, they, sometimes I, I walk over and I say, what are you doing? And they're like this, I'm trying to come up with ideas. And I'm like, it doesn't happen. It doesn't just pop into it can your be head. helpful for a moment to think of a model where ideas exist on a continuum from derivative to original. Now, in this model, derivative ideas are relatively easy to, to generate, while original ideas are hard. Now, in the creative act, all ideas fall somewhere along this axis, but relax, relax, because we'll discuss the ways that this model is flawed in a moment, but, but you need to stick with me in order for me to make my point. For most artists, there comes a moment in their personal development where simply copying, where making work like other artists is, is just not enough. Now, I've made a few recent videos that address the value of copying as a way of developing technical mastery and formal mastery. And these videos, I have also discussed the, the problems with copying in a number of other recent videos. I have spoken about the problems with verisimilitude and what is verisimilitude. It is art that has the appearance of being real, where the artist functions like a camera. Most, but not all, art and design videos on, on YouTube are about how to draw and paint a picture that actually looks like the thing that you're painting, that steeps itself in verisimilitude. And, and obviously, for most people, uh, this, is, this is enough. The, the idea itself is enough, and that's the problem. It's not a very interesting idea. It is the idea behind works of art that make the work interesting. And unfortunately, for most people, you don't need an idea. You, you, you simply need to, to copy reality. Making work in this way and with this approach to art is precisely why the work is uninteresting. Now, when an artist arrives at the point where they want to couple interesting form, the way that the work looks with interesting ideas, the way that the work, what the work means, they have arrived at an exponentially more challenging and more interesting problem. So where to begin? Where do ideas actually come from? Well. How, 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 how does an artist, how should an artist think through art and design and also develop interesting ideas? So let's break down the process of generating ideas and look at both how to do it effectively as well as some of the more difficult implications from this process. In the practice of meditation, there's a long history spanning many religious and philosophical traditions that involves quieting the mind and the body in order to empty the mind. This raises the question, it raises the fundamental question of if it is even possible to empty the mind. Now, why would we ask this question? We'd ask this question because paying attention to this process, we can learn where ideas come from. Now, complete emptiness is an impossibility and looking closely at the origin of our thoughts can be a powerful tool for the artist. Now, in the, trans, in, the, in the tradition of transcendental meditation, the meditator repeats a mantra like the word Om over and over and over again. In this process, 
Anytime the mind drifts or wanders from the mantra, the meditator gently brings their attention back to a single point, back to the mantra, back to the sound, back to the word, over and over and over again. Now, even during attempts to quiet the mind, such as in meditation, the mind continues to generate thoughts. Attempts to suppress thinking are nearly impossible. Now, in this process, if we pay attention to our thinking, we can chase the beast back to its lair. We can begin to notice the, 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 the brain, the cosmos, the universal one relentlessly populates the mind with thoughts. An empty mind is an impossibility. When we quiet the mind, plumbing the vast depths of the psyche, the act of creation happens unabated at the most fundamental level. It's at this moment that like in lucid dreaming, the artist can simultaneously trace the thought bubbles down through the various strata of consciousness to their primordial source, subtly guiding and shaping them. It's in this process and at this moment that we can imagine new work, new possibilities. So the modified transcendental meditation process for the artist is basically as follows. It's almost this simple. Quiet the mind and body. Focus on a mantra. When the focus drifts, bring the focus back to the mantra. Then notice, begin to notice the origins of thought. And then shape, subtly give form and shape to those thoughts in a way that is not dissimilar from lucid dreaming. So the modified transcendental meditation method is the purest of the methods that I'm suggesting today. Now, if we look at my initial model for the idea of creation, uh, the creative tools for the artist, the modified transcendental method falls far to the right of this scale. Now, this begs the question, what are other tools that an artist can use to help generate ideas? And why would they want to do that? Well, let's look at the original model that I laid out uh, for a moment. And if you're having difficulty with the pure, unadulterated act of creation, if the modified transcendental meditation method is difficult or if it's unproductive, then the way to fix this is to enlarge the realm of the derivative, to increase its area. Now, if we use methods that increase the realm of the derivative, we we build ideas off of something that's pre-existing. This does not mean, this does not mean derivative, it does not necessarily mean derivative of others' work. It may mean derivative of your own thoughts, your own processes, your own forms, your own pre-existing body of work. But the goal is to build, off, build new ideas off of something pre-existing. You can derive uh, the idea from your work in some ways from your last work. Everything you need to know about your next piece may be contained in your last piece. Now here is a list of processes to generate your next work that enlarge that realm. Transcendental meditation, far on the right. Extension, expansion, comparison, copy, cross-pollination, process, automatic writing, conversion, I mean conversation, and the limitation and limitations as a catalyst. Now at the, at the core of most of the, these ideas lies, um, lies a, a, a fundamental similarities. So in, in, in uh, extension and expansion, we can extend and expand our existing work. So the closer that we look at any subject, the more we see. Ideas expand in the field of our attention. The closer you look at any subject, the more you see in this method, what we do is we, we bring our attention to a given subject or one of our existing works. We research every aspect of the work in the subject. In this process, ideas will inexorably manifest themselves. It's also possible to systematically copy an existing work, selectively changing fundamental aspects of the work in this process, creating a new thing. Now, I made a whole video about this process already, so I won't go into detail here. The next process that we can use is the cross-pollination process, where we take two dissimilar ideas, two dissimilar bodies of work, and use, extrapolate, extract from them their genome, for lack of a better word, to create something new. So as an example, we could take the drawing style from 
piece A and the subject from piece B or the color palette from piece B to make color C, or the color palette from item A and the uh, sculptural form from item B to create item C. You can do this process with your own work or with any two dissimilar elements. This is an example from my own work. Automatic writing is also a tool that we can uh, use. This process is in somewhat similar to the modified transcendental meditation process in that you begin with a blank page and simply start writing whatever appears. So in some ways this process has much of the promise as well as many of the complexities of the tra modified transcendental meditation process. Another extremely effective way to enlarge the realm of the pre-existing is to simply listen to the ideas about your work from others, to engage in meaningful conversations about your work with other people, and to listen very carefully. Now, it is also possible to incubate ideas, to plant subject matter into the subconscious, to tell yourself to work on an idea as a kind of background cognitive process, to let the idea, the subject, gestate in the psyche over time, only to return to the development of the idea uh, in a more systematic way after you have told your subconscious to work on that idea over time. We see that on the screen now. Now at the base, at the root of all of these methods are a few basic principles. Preparation, ga gathering information and immersing yourself in a topic, and then the incubation process which is this idea of allowing the subconscious mind to process the information. Uh, the third step in the process is illumination, where there is this aha moment. That can be a very subtle thing, but when the, when the idea emerges. And finally, verification, which is where what we do is we use our analytical mind to think through the ideas and to test for whether or not the idea has merit. Uh, we can use a host of um, research tools to do that. Now, a reoccur reoccurring theme in my videos and in my own work has been about mindfulness, about paying very close attention to our ways of thinking, how we think and why we think the way that we think. In the modified transcendental meditation process that I've outlined here, it's possible to also begin to question who's in control. Where do ideas actually come from? And what is my, yours, or our role in that process as the artist? Are we the shaper of the idea or are we a mere vessel for its articulation, for its manifestation out into the material world?